Hello and welcome everyone to our fifth Wyckoff class. Now, I have made way too many, you know, sexual innuendo Wyckoff jokes, so let's get right into the book this time. So, what we're going to talk about today is accumulation. So, we're going to go a lot more in depth into it than we went before. So, before, basically, what we've seen were the basic accumulation structures and what they usually mean. Today we're going to go a little bit more in depth and into the context of all the laws that we explored over the past three classes. Okay, so basically what accumulation is, is a lateral movement of the price of an asset to change, like to change the possession of it from the weak hands to the like the small investors to the strong hands, the large investors, long-term investors. So Usually, when we're trending down, for example, from here to here, that's when the asset is concentrated into small investors and short-term holders. And this accumulation phase here serves like precisely to change the asset from these hands, the weak hands, to the large investors, okay? The strong hands. Now, I don't want you guys to be too much of the buy the dip guys, you know, just infinitely buy the dip as you see your money go away. But this is something to, to, to be aware of. These accumulation ranges, they are the most important parts of just changing hands. And this is why Ruben points it as the very first one. Okay, so usually... You know, in the context of stock control, this is usually made so that they can absorb all the asset that they can, okay, all the asset that they can for the lowest price possible. So they keep it in this very, very tight range here. And they keep it so that they can acquire at the very, like, the very, very lowest price that they can get. They dump it all the way down and try to keep it down, okay? They keep coming with... So, you know, bad narratives and bad news and whatnot, just to keep this price down and, you know, so that they can acquire the most of it. And when they test, they finally test and see that no weak hands are left, no weak hands are willing to sell anymore, that's when price starts to go up, okay? And this is also why when I talk about, uh, like, the short-term holder, short holder realized price, that is why holding it as support can be quite a meaningful, you know, event for price to go up, okay? All right, so in the context of law of cause and effect, which we've seen in the past classes, this is basically building a cause, right? During these downtrends, that is usually where the cause for the future uptrend is built, Okay, so they start coming with their narratives that Bitcoin is going to be the currency of the future, that is going to be in a bull market forever and whatnot. That's when they start building this narrative so that they can futurely, you know, bring the price up. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are handling maneuvers, as I said. They are trying to shake off the, the weak hands, even the experienced guys, and just buy as much of the asset as they can. Right, and they do this by making like a flat, boring market context that no one wants to, you know, to be part of. No one wants to trade. No one wants to buy, and that's usually when it's the best time to buy. Right, when no one wants to buy, when it's a flat, boring market that no one is watching, that is usually where you make the most money, and that is where the, the like the strong hands are holding. Uh, in the context of counterparty and liquidity, this is something that, even though I'm not the biggest Wyckoff guy in the world, right, I don't take it, like, it's not my main tool of analysis, I, I'm not looking for patterns all day long, because I, as I mentioned in my time series forecasting video, I don't think that's particularly useful, but... This is one thing from Wyckoff theory that I think is particularly valuable, okay? That large traders, they are always, always coming for the small traders' liquidity, right? And that means, essentially, that they are coming after people's stop losses and stuff like that, their liquidations and whatnot. And the reason that I think that, it's because, like, me, as a retail investor, I'm just a 20-year-old guy. All right, and I have access to this tool here, which is the Kingfisher.io. You can get some credits for free and whatnot. So I'm getting access to this completely for free, 
And this tells me people's liquidation prices, right? And this can generate quite a lot of alpha for me. And so if I have access to this, and I'm just a regular guy, okay? If you're watching this, I'm basically just like you, maybe even poorer, okay? And like, if I have access to this, who knows what those huge investment firms with, with like million dollar budgets and whatnot can do. You think they cannot build an algorithm that just goes after the most like liquidation liquidity? Of course they can. Okay, of course they can. It's obvious to me. And so this is one thing that I think is like basically a fact, okay? The, the other thing is that price usually follows the path of least resistance. Now, this means that, you know, as much as most of the times we'll see something like a spring event, like what we saw way back in July 2021 here, which is like the final, final shakeout. And this is, you know, usually the, the most important event of an accumulation phase. It does not always happen, okay? As we can see in the basic accumulation structures, if we go way back in the book, let me look for it. And here they are. So there's the second basic accumulation structure that happens without a spring. And this is really interesting because it forces us to analyze the market conditions. So usually when the market, you know, is in a background of more strength, like for example, no, no foresight of economical recession, no wars, you know, everything is prosperous, then it's really hard to form a spring, to form a big, big capitulation event for you, for you to drive the price up. And while the spring can be really, really in favor of the bulls, it does not always happen and you shouldn't be expecting things to play out the exact same way every single time, okay? Now, Ruben here just gives us some very, very useful common characteristics of all accumulation ranges. And this is, you know, I'm going to give you two things, you know, just think about if you only watch this video and nothing more. And like the first thing is like, thinking about this list and trying to spot it in Bitcoin and other assets and whatnot. So the characteristics that Ruben points to us here are first a decrease in volume and volatility as the range develops. So first, the range is really wide. So you have a really wide range. And as the range develops, it just gets tighter. Okay. So we can see it quite clearly here. You have a wide range before. And then it starts getting, you know, smaller. Okay. Also, the tests of the top range are usually low in volume. So, for example, here, when we test the upper range, we have relatively low volume. And when we test the, lo the, like, the lowest part of the range, then we have way higher volume. Okay. Um, there are springs to previous lows, so we usually will go towards the lower, like the lows that the, the asset has seen before. So stuff like this, this accumulation here was essentially at the same levels that we were in January 2021 before the run to 64k. Okay. Next, there are wider and smoother upward movements and bars than. Uh, then downward movements. So usually the upward movements will be, you know, just well, they will take more time and the downward movements will be really sharp down. So this is a really, you know, interesting example because here you can see if we look at lower time frames, which makes it, you know, just a little bit better for us to say. Let me see. Let me grab that range back in the lower time frames just so we can see it a little bit better okay so the upward trend here for example to the top of the range back in june 2021 we had a little you know just kind of reaccumulation here until we got to that point so it was a slower movement and then when we went down it was you know just a straight line down, just down, 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 and nothing else, okay? Then we take a while to, to make a new high, and then boom, straight down. Then we take a while 
to go up. It takes a little bit of while and then boom, straight down. And that's how uh, the accumulation structures exist, right? So we take a while to go up and boom, down, right? So this is another key feature of accumulations. And finally, this is, you know, a pattern that Ruben points here that did not play out specifically this time. This was a downwards accumulation, but an accumulation can have, and Ruben even points to us here, uh, that uh, an accumulation can have that as a key feature. Accumulations can have higher lows and higher highs. So accumulations can happen kind of in this direction. direction okay. So this is another key feature of some accumulation ranges, but you, you always need to take into consideration the market context, okay? And the second thing that I want you to, you know, just fixate on your head is that accumulation ranges exist to build the narrative and build that cause. We talked about this before in the law of cause and effect. We talked about this in the basic accumulation structures, but this is something that you gotta have fixed in your head, okay? And finally, the beginning of the bullish movement. So when the accumulation ends, that's usually when we see a, bull, a bullish movement, right? As we saw back here in July and August, and then finally November, right? When there's no longer any stock whatsoever to be absorbed, then you have that spring or that just that shift in trend, that change of character. And that is when the asset starts trending up, when the retail interest has been completely exhausted. Okay? So, yeah. Um, when this happens, just a, a small, a small slight increase in demand will suddenly provoke, you know, just a big, big move up. So we can see here, for example, this was not even a high volume candle here. These were not even high volume candles and we had very expressive move ups. Okay. So this just constitutes, as we saw, an imbalance of volume and uh, price movement. And it also constitutes the end of the accumulation. Okay. So this was about it. If you want more content, go to the cryptogarden.io. Uh, sign up there and you can have access to more classes and whatnot. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and goodbye.